and now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin for November 28, 2021. As we look around the wide world of tropics today, you can see no tropical cyclones are currently active all around the world. Things looking pretty quiet on the 332nd day of this year. We've had 88 storms so far this year, 92 being the average. We have about a month to go to get to that average. We'll see if that happens. As we head into the Atlantic, you can see there are no storms active and no areas of interest active either as we only have two days left of the hurricane season and we're in the 180th day of it. We've had 21 named storms, 7 hurricanes, and 4 majors at this point. Adria doesn't look to be in sight anytime soon, but you can't rule out something forming at some point in December. We'll be keeping you posted as we continue to monitor the Atlantic for that. As we head into the Eastern Pacific on the 196th day of their hurricane season, we've had 19 named storms, 9 hurricanes, and 2 majors, only 2 days left there. We're not expecting anything out in the Eastern Pacific anytime soon either. As we head into the Western Pacific, activity has been piping up a bit. You can see 94W there, now with a 0% chance of formation. There was a slight chance that that could have moved into the Bay of Bengal and turned into something. We no longer think that's going to be the case. And Invest 93W has a 30% chance of formation in a rather large area to form in the Western Pacific. We've had 19 named storms, 9 typhoons, and 4 majors so far. 93W could become the next named storm. We'll just have to see what happens. We'll be monitoring trends to let you know what the latest developments are. As we head into the northern Indian Ocean, you can see there are no storms active in the Bay of Bengal or the Arabian Sea. We've had five named storms, three cyclones, and one major thus far. Nothing more is expected at this time, at least in the foreseeable future, but you can't rule out something happening before the end of the year. We'll just have to see what exactly happens. In the southern Indian Ocean, we've had no storms whatsoever so far, and we have no storms that are currently active. We're expecting this to change with time, though, as we head into the 2021-2022 Southern Hemisphere season. We'll just have to see what exactly happens. Again, we'll be keeping a close eye on things and keeping you posted as new developments arise. As we head into the Australian region, we've had Paddy thus far this season, although we haven't seen anything else and we're not expecting anything else over the next five days. We'll just have to see what exactly happens throughout the season, as we're sure activity will begin to pipe up as we head into January and February, but we'll just have to see. And as we head into the Southern Pacific, you can see no storms are active there either, with no cyclones that have formed so far. Again though, as we head into the Southern Hemisphere season, we can expect a few storms to form throughout the next few months. Again, Force 13 will be covering these storms extensively as they happen. Well, let's take a look at satellite now. Here's the North Atlantic Ocean. You can see that cluster of thunderstorms to the north of Bermuda there, heading off of the coast of Canada. That's not going to be becoming tropical anytime soon. You can see the dry air very potently behind it. That is a very potent front. Nothing's going to be able to form along that. Sea surface temperatures are insufficient. You'll also see a cluster of thunderstorms near the main development region. And while sea surface temperatures are good, wind shear and dry air are going to be too limiting for anything to form down there. As we head into the Eastern Pacific, you can see south of Baja, California, uh, in the Baja Peninsula, uh, the impressive cluster of thunderstorms down there. It's rather large, but you can see as well that it's getting quite a bit of wind shear. This is going to prevent it from becoming anything tropical anytime soon. In the Western Pacific, you can see our two areas of interest, 94W, a couple of clusters now. It's split to the north and south. That's not going to be developing into anything. There's no model support for it really whatsoever at this point. And Invest 93W is becoming an organized cluster, a rather large one, but an organized cluster of storms that's going to traverse the Western Pacific over the next few days, heading in the general direction of the Philippines. So the Philippines need to keep an eye on this. It's not expected to impact you, and we're not even expecting it to develop at this point, but it's just something to keep an eye on over the next few days. Here we are as we take a closer look at the Indian Ocean. You can see the Bay of Bengal, pretty inactive. There's some clusters of storms, but none of those are expected to become tropical. And the Arabian Sea, from what you can see there, is also looking pretty inactive. Invest 94W is in the picture though, but again, that is no longer expected to develop into anything. As we head into the Australian region, you can see some clusters of thunderstorms there near Indonesia. Those aren't expected to become anything. Again, wind shear is going to be too limiting. And uh, the country of Australia itself has a few thunderstorms on the eastern side, but overall, uh, the country looking pretty barren in terms of clouds in general. So not much in terms of activity on the Australian region. And as we head into the Southern Pacific, you can see here rather clearly a couple clusters of thunderstorms. But again, those are not in any position to become tropical anytime soon, either as they're too stretched out along a front or they're just being too sheared to become anything. 
As we look at sea surface temperatures, you can see the hot spot there, the Western Pacific and the Australian region, both primed for something strong to form there if the rest of the conditions align. The Northern and Southern Indian Oceans, accordingly, are also looking rather good in terms of sea surface temperature, with the Eastern Pacific looking like the weakest basin and the Atlantic not far behind. As we take a look at the averages or the sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see a rather strong La Nina that's been forming up with time here. Uh, this does influence us in a climatological fashion. Uh, that is explained in some other videos of ours. But you can see here rather clearly those below average sea surface temperatures in the Southern Pacific and in the Northeastern Pacific. And you can see there the above average temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean, the Western Pacific, and the Indian Ocean. As you can see here, this is our on this day for November 28th, 2000. We have the Bay of Bengal 05 system that was occurring as a 115 mile per hour major cyclone at this point. And we have Rumbia in the Western Pacific, a weak tropical storm peaking at 50 miles per hour on this day. Well, in the Atlantic, we've gotten all the way to Wanda. Adria is the first name of the auxiliary list. That's the next storm we're looking for. That's not in sight anytime soon. As we look at the Eastern Pacific, we're all the way up to Terry. Vivian is our next name. Santa's supposed to be able to deliver anything to you that you want on Christmas Day, but unfortunately, the one thing it won't be able to deliver is Hone. As we head into the Western Pacific, you can see here clearly that we've gotten all the way to Malu. Nayoto is the next name, and Jawad is the next name in the Northern Indian Ocean, Shashin being the latest storm that's occurred up there. As we head into the Australian region, you can see we've had Patty so far, a tropical storm. Ruby is the next name, with Anna and Cody still yet to form in the Southwest Indian Ocean and South Pacific.